Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my corner of the internet. My name is Jason, and today, since it's October, and uh, since I have a pension for, we'll say, scary games, I figured we'd play one of my... I don't know, one of my favorites, actually. Uh, possibly my favorite. Uh, and that would be... Fatal Frame. Based on a true story. We'll get into the details about, we'll say, the story uh, a little bit later. Um, but for now, let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, there'll be plenty of time to discuss that kind of stuff. So if, you, uh, if you're familiar with the game, strap yourselves in and get ready for a fun ride. And if you're not familiar with the game, well, just a warning. Uh, the only thing more terrifying than the, we'll say, ghastly apparitions we are going to see is the voice acting. Let's begin. Let's go ahead and new game. Game start. I wonder how long it's been since my brother and I began to see things other people can't see. My big brother, he was so sweet and kind. He was the only one I could open up to about these visions. After our mother died, he was my only family. So this is Himuro Mansion. in search of someone. Junsei Takamine, a famous novelist, and a man my brother was very indebted to, disappeared while researching a book. When he told me that he got a lead on Mr. Takamine's whereabouts, He was going far away. Himuro, the intro. Basically, this is going to be the tutorial part of the game. The forbidden rituals of this area. It looks like Mr. Takamine was doing research into them. I wonder if his group is still here. <laughs> Seriously, it's like, it's like, it's like uh, uh, Terry, can you move my lines a little bit closer? I'm having a hard time reading them. It's basically how what it sounds like is the guy's struggling to read his lines. Um, so anyways, uh, the game is uh, set up in a, um, I guess I'll say, Quasi fixed camera, sort of. Uh, the environments are 3D, so it's not quite Resident Evil esque. Um, uh, well, I guess maybe later installments, but basically, it's uh, the, it is a 3D environment. You move around, kind of like uh, you would in uh, those old survival horror games. And the, the premise of the game here is, um, let's see, Mr. Takamine should be in the mansion somewhere. I've got to find him fast. Um, the, the premise is basically you uh, are, in, we'll say, a haunted mansion or haunted area, and uh, you have uh, yourself a. Well, I don't want to spoil too much, but you have a camera that you can use to sort of capture ghosts, um, and uh, basically, yeah, this guy right here that we're gonna be playing for with uh, in the tutorial is looking for some author, which you know we we heard all about, about all this, so. Um, we don't need to, to go over it all over again, but uh, there's a box of film on the floor. Type 14 film. I found type 14 film. I think I can use it with my camera. I, I want a, I want a modern remake of Fatal Frame, but instead of like finding film, you're finding like enchanted SD cards. It's like a digital camera. 
I don't think it would have the same charm. Anyways, camera controls. While holding the camera, press the circle button to take shooting stance. And to enter finder mode, you can take photos with the X or R1 button while in finder mode. While in finder mode, you can control the player's viewpoint with the left analog stick. That's going to be great. Um, wait, left. Yeah, that's going to be great. Um... So, X move finder quickly, and triangle to turn around. Use the right analog stick to move around while in shooting stance. Now, um, I have played the game before. Uh, I'll get into the, my history with the game a little bit later. Uh, but I wanted to show at least this tutorial message here, because uh, this brings up one of the fun... Enter the tutorial by selecting scraps under the file and menu. Uh, one of the fun little tidbits about, or one fun little things about uh, this game that I'm going to be running into. Uh, when you bring up the camera, that's not the camera. Holy crap. What am I doing? Uh, this is the camera. There we go. You can sort of look around. You have to use the left analog stick, which, you know, if you've played a, a first-person shooter, uh, we'll say a modern first-person shooter on a console, you know that typically the right stick is used for that. This is going to be a bit of a problem, uh, I, I think, for me, because um, there was actually uh, multiple versions of this game. Uh, there was the, the PS2 version, which is uh, the one that we are playing, uh, and then there was the superior Xbox version, original Xbox. Now, the reason we're playing the PlayStation 2 version is because this version is actually, um, we can actually be emulated. Uh, the Xbox version, uh, which is the one I spent most of my time with, uh, can't be emulated, but it has better controls, better graphics, uh, I believe it actually has an extra ending and more ghosts to encounter, so it's uh, definitely a superior version. What we're going to do here is, you notice in the bottom right hand corner, there's a sort of a blue light that's glowing. That's telling me that there is something nearby, that there's, I'm sensing something. So what I'm going to do is I take out my camera and I can sort of uh, survey the area. And you'll notice there's, there's a bit of a, uh, a blue glow on the circle. Now if I go, and there's a bit of like a wavy distortion effect. If I go ahead and snap a photo, which I'm going to do right now. We get a nice picture of a child. Yeah, because that's what the... Oh, no, I didn't want to take another picture. Oh, well. Uh, because that is uh, something you do in this game. Is uh, you take pictures of ghosts. And it's uh, not just, we'll say, hostile ghosts. It's not just, um, you know, it's not like the gun to the zombie. Um, throughout this game, we're going to be encountering, we'll say, ghosts that are, we'll say, more of um, a benign or a harmless variety. Uh, not all of them are out for blood. They're not all going to try and kill us. Uh, this camera here with the blue light is a save point. We're going to be using these uh, fairly regularly. There's an old camera here. I think I can take a shot. Yes, go ahead and take a selfie so that we can uh, go ahead and uh, get, uh, get to playing here. We're going we're gonna to be saving regularly because, um, well, we'll get into the details of... We'll get into the details of, uh, we'll say, why uh, a little bit later, but I think it's pretty uh, pretty obvious. Uh, so, like I, I mentioned before, I do have some history with the game. I have played it before, um, but it has been a while, and I've never actually completed the game. So, uh, it's, it's like, it's not blind, but it's also not fresh in my mind either. So, I'm going to be taking my time through it and um, sort of looking at stuff, interacting with stuff, and actually on that note... Uh, this statue thing. I wonder if I can go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, not statue, there's a thing on the wall. There's an angry looking mask on the wall. That's it. I've got to remember to, uh, just try to interact with things, uh, random things in the, uh, environment. Like the candlestick, for instance. I don't think I can, but... I'm basically pressing the, what I believe is the X button. I'm trying to remember my PlayStation layout, because I'm playing this actually, since it's being emulated, on a 360 pad. But... All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, move through here into this next room. Uh, yes, I remember this room. Okay. Now, you'll notice when we, you get close to something of interest, uh, the main character's, uh, or the character you're playing's head will move to sort of look at uh, an item of interest. So that you can keep an eye on your character to sort of... Um... Oh. There we go. Rope Hallway Man. So, the game is full of stuff like that, of, we'll say, just random apparitions that will appear, and uh, you can't always get them on your first try. So, uh, or, sorry, you, sometimes you need to get them on your first try, or else they are gone forever. Um, and there, there's a reason why you want to be, uh, we'll say, snapping photos of these, we'll say, uh, these harmless ghosts, 
uh, but we'll get into that a little bit later as well. There's a big mirror, but it only shows my own reflection. All right, and what do we what have we got over here? We have a blocked door. There's a board nailed to the door. Probably been there a while. I'll try another room. All right. Why don't we go ahead and head into the same direction that that other ghost was going? Now, the not the entire game is not all uh, black and white, and I, I don't remember being necessarily this grainy either. Um, after the tutorial, we do get color, uh, but I think that they, they use the black and white uh, to one to sort of um, put us on edge but also kind of uh, emphasize that this event occurred in the past. So we've come in here, let's go ahead and, uh, we'll say, inspect the items in this room. There's an old suit of armor here. Doesn't seem to be just for show. Seen some hard use. What have we got here? A uh, little box on the ground? Uh, what about this suit of armor? Okay, that one's uh, same message. Uh, what about these drawers? Can I... Lots of antiques here. They might have been worth something at some point. There isn't anything special in the drawer. Okay, nothing specially there either. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and snap a photo of the guy up there. Man looking down. Now, uh, I guess I was I'm kind of lucky here. When I, when I faced in this direction and I brought up the camera, it automatically made me look up. And I'm kind of hoping that the, the game will be nice enough to do that as well. I'm wondering if that's because, um, our character w you know, looks in era in the direction of areas of interest. That's actually an interesting idea. I, I need to, I need to test that. All right. So you're hearing a bit of that static sound, and you're seeing that light light up in the bottom, which is telling us there's another, we'll say, point of interest or a ghost hidden nearby. There's an old clock here. It's been stopped for a while. There are cobwebs. All right. That's not where the ghost is. I actually remember where this one is. Um, so we come into this room, and we want to go ahead and search around. Where is this ghost? And he's actually op over here on top of the bookshelf. Snap a photo. And we get Angry Man. Uh, anything on these bookshelves? I don't seem to recall. The books are falling apart. I can't even read the covers. There aren't any books of real interest here. And what do we Oh, there's a box here. What about the box? I need to be able to inspect the box. Okay, nothing there. The staircase has fallen down. All right, so there's nothing over in this direction. Uh, but yeah, so I've mentioned uh, this is uh, technically emulated, and uh, while I'd love to be playing the Xbox version, this one here uh, is the only well, it's the only way I can sort of play and record this game. And I really wanted to play it, so we're just gonna have to deal with, uh, we'll say, the uh, the emulation here. Now, note, uh, you also notice that the graphics are probably a little bit on the blurry side. You know, emulators, a lot of times you can up the resolution of uh, a game it's not going to be the case here, uh, because uh, emulation is not perfect, and while uh, Fatal Frame is mostly, uh, well, um, we'll say perfectly emulated, there is one little bug, which we'll get into in a second. This notebook, it's Mr. Takamine's.
shooting ghosts. Now, it's going to go ahead and uh, bring us through the combat, but I just wanted to comment on uh, how that scene looked. You know, this was a 2001 game. Uh, I played it in 2002 because that's when it was released in North America, but uh, I actually think it was done... Uh, rather well. I don't know, I, I find that uh, the game holds up. Maybe not, we'll say, in the voice acting category, or even in the, we'll say, models or gameplay with, of the, the characters, but uh, we'll say the, the concept of the ghosts and how they behave, I think, works very well even today. So anyway, shooting ghosts. So you want to hold up the camera with the circle button and press the shutter with the X button to attack ghosts. When the target is inside the circle, power, mystical power, accumulates. The damage you inflict on the ghost goes up as you accumulate more power in the camera. We'll, we'll be able to demonstrate that in a second. Shutterbug moment. While you have the ghost in your viewfinder and the circle glows, take a shot. You can inflict heavy damage when you take a shot during a shutterbug moment. Now, I believe that what they mean by that is uh, right before a ghost attacks you. Right before a ghost attacks, the, the, the circle will turn from blue to red. And at that moment there, you actually do, you inflict additional damage, kind of like a critical hit. And what this does is it incentivizes you to wait until the last possible moment to shoot the ghost. This is great from a horror perspective, and uh, yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. We're just gonna get into things and then we'll, we'll discuss things. Okay, so let's pull out the... Oh crap, that's right, controls. Okay, so we're building up all the symbols, we're maxed out at the bottom. And I'm going to try to wait until the last second. There we go. Kind of orangish, right? I love what this does from, a, we'll say, a, like, a, as far as, like, for a horror game, is that it actually forces you to confront, to get as close as possible to the ghosts, uh, to go ahead and um, get that additional damage. And I, I, the, the game does a lot of... I captured a ghost with this camera. This camera has the power to expose things the normal eye can't see. I remember the incident from which I learned of its unique power to capture ghosts. <laughs> Anyways, um, I think the game does, uh, we'll say, uh, a lot of interesting things or really great things with the way it lays things out um, and why it's very, it works very well as a horror game. There's a black padlock on the door. Okay, we can't go through there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and explore some of the, the rest of this area here. There's an old folding screen here. It might have been pretty once, but it's faded now. What about this window-looking thing? No, nothing. All right. Um... Okay, now pay attention to that. <laughs> Actually made me jump. Uh, I, and I seem to recall... Uh, no, I've seen that before. I've been through this section, but it actually made me jump. All right. Now, there isn't anything uh, in the drawers of the chest. And this was, brings us back out to uh, that collapsed staircase. All right, so we saw the ghost head back into that um, that uh, that doorway. So that's basically where we want to uh, to be heading. Um, but yeah, now another thing I like that uh, that makes Fatal Frame, we'll say, uh, unique. Uh, we'll say, we'll say from the horror perspective, is that um, you know. You're not really safe up against the wall, and a lot of these uh, survival horror games, you know, I'd get my back up against the wall, or you know, I'd find a safe spot to sort of hide and fight back from. You can't really do that because the ghosts can travel through walls and uh, you know, go through objects. The door to the entrance is open, but I'm sure it was closed a while ago. Well, you know, because the camera shift, we know that a ghost went through there. So why don't we go ahead and investigate through the door? What what's over here? What's back out in this hallway we came through? Come on, go through the door. Thank you. Uh, and the, it's like, oh, that door just closed on its own. I don't know about you, but I, about, about this point, actually, a lot before this point, I would have been out of here. And that's the end of the tutorial. It's been two weeks since I last heard from my brother. But he left a note that led me to this place. I felt as though something was calling me here.
The Strangling Ritual, the first night. All right, and now we are in control of the main protagonist of the game. Um, and so we're, we're here searching for our brother. My brother was here. <sighs> what, what is this place? Here we go. Uh, so we're searching for our brother, who uh, who is searching for his, an author, and all of these freaking people decide to let's go. Let's go investigate some place. You know, let, let's let's start with the author. He's like, let's go check out this spooky place in the middle of the woods at night. And then the brother's like, hey, I'm gonna go look for somebody at night. And then the sister is like, hey, let me go look for him at night. Why don't these people go during the middle of the day? Like, really? <laughs> I, I have to question, let's say, the logic um, of some of these people. All right. Uh, so, yeah, now we have... Uh, oh, I've already forgotten her name. Darn it. What is her name? Let's... Uh, actually, I believe I can, uh, I can see what her name is. Uh, under the files, I think. Notebook? Nope. Scraps? Nope. All right. Uh... Basically, when you hit a triangle, it brings you into the, your menu screen. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm used to the Xbox controls, so it took me a second to get uh, used to that. Um, we go ahead under File, and this has basically all the information that we're going to be gathering uh, during we'll say, our investigation, our, our trek through the Haunted Mansion. And if you go under Correlation, you can kind of see uh, the different groups, and as we discover more information about them, it will fill in these details. So we're looking for Mafuyu uh, Hin uh, Hinasake? Saki? Uh, and we are Miku, and that's basically, uh, that's who we are, and we're looking for our brother uh, in this, in this, this, um, I almost called it a castle, it's a mansion. Um, now you'll, you, you, because our brother had the camera obscura, the, the wonderful camera that can capture ghosts, we don't have that right now, which makes us a little bit more vulnerable, but we will be getting that soon enough. So there's something on the floor. Herbal medicine, I got the herbal medicine. Now, we'll be using that to heal ourselves, you know, when uh, ghosts attack us. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. Maybe, you know, Advil or something else, you know, some antibiotics would work just as well. But all we got is herbal medicine, so that's what we're, what we're going to use. Um, is there anything this way? Now, even though uh, for this first little bit, we're going to be traversing the same area as um, we did with uh, the brother, uh, there are going to be some differences. The area is going to be slightly different. So, um, it's still good to go ahead and we'll say re-explore things. So we're going to go ahead and save, uh, things here. Now, I did, uh, I started talking about it and I, uh, I, I didn't finish my thoughts. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, continue with that. Uh, the graphics, things look kind of, um, blurry, right? They look kind of low resolution. And with emulators, a lot of times you can sort of boost the resolution and make things look sharper. Now... Uh, the emulation for Fatal Frame is... <laughs> you, made me, you startled me, I hate you. Um, it's not perfect. Uh, what happens is if I... Uh, right now I'm using a software renderer. So basically, nothing fancy. My video card's really basically doing nothing. Um, can't remember if there's anything here. Uh, it's, 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 it's basically just emulating what it would look like on an actual PS2. my brother's camera and notebook from the floor. Mom's old camera. My brother had this with him. 
I found a new note inside Mafeu's notebook. Let's go ahead and read that. Himuro Mansion Investigation Himuro Mansion was once the home of a large landowner that controlled vast areas of land. They also say that the site held some special significance that had to do with Shinto rituals of the region. I couldn't find any detailed books about these Shinto rituals, though. The last master of the Himuro uh, family line massacred his entire household. Later, another family that tried to live there disappeared. Because of incidents like these, nobody visits the mansion today, and it lies in ruins. Maybe that's why there aren't any accounts of the Shinto rituals, and why the exact location of the place isn't recorded anywhere. I suppose this could kind of explain why they arrive at night and they spend most of the day trying to find the place. Hmm. September 24th. I've had a bad feeling ever since I came to this mansion. I'm just leaving notes in this notebook just in case anything happens to me. I've got to find Mr. Takamine and the others fast. I hope it's not too late. It's too late, guy. There are many other notes and news articles inside the notebook. Uh... Man on a beam. I forgot how to control things for a bit. Alright. Um, so I'll finish my thought about, the, we'll say, the technical side. If I, if you do play the game with a hardware renderer, so basically you up the resolution and stuff like that, uh, the game actually becomes unplayable because it, uh, your camera will not detect that there's a ghost in, uh, in the viewfinder. Uh, so you, you cannot fight ghosts, so therefore you cannot play the game. So that's why we're gonna have to deal with, uh, the, the blurriness. Alright, you know, before we go through that door, let's go ahead and take a look at the notes. Uh, like I said, we're gonna t take our time through this game. We're gonna uh, sort of enjoy things. Um, notebook. Wow, we've got a lot of stuff here. News clipping. All right, let's we'll use notebook. Uh, this is when we is the one we already read. Yes. All right. Just gonna clear anything that says new. August twentieth. Mr. Takamine needs some background material for his next work. There's a book about Humiro Mansion by a certain folklorist, and I'm supposed to look for it. A book about Shinto rituals and legends from every part of the country. Author, uh, Ryozo Munakata. Title unknown. August 22nd. I can't find the book, but I did some checking on the folklorist and found out he moved into Himuro Mansion to do research on it. But after some certain event, he and his whole family disappeared. I couldn't find the book, but I found a news article uh, from that period about it. It's a small missing person story, but it might be helpful as background material. Okay, interesting. Uh, that must be the, um, I believe we have a, a news clipping right here. A news article from FU's notebook, Star Mystery Novelist Missing. Let's read this now. There was a report yesterday that a star novelist, Junsei Takamine, age 42, has been missing since the 8th of this month. Mr. Takamine's assistant, uh, Tomo uh, Hirasaka, and his editor, Koji Ogata, are also missing. Mr. Takamine last made a phone call to his publishers on September 8th regarding his research trip and has not been heard from for 14 days. The publishers first assumed that the research was taking longer than expected, but since there were no calls from Mr. Ogata, they decided to file a missing persons report. Hmm. All right. Let's go back to some more of the research uh, notes. Uh, editor, wait, these are actually um, not Maf uh, Mafuyu's. These are Editor Ogata's notes. Okay. So, uh, Editor Ogata was tasked in finding that, that book and that information. Uh, Himuro mentioned Antakamene's next work. September 10th, 11 a.m. It looks like the earthquake last month and the murders in that village have something to do with Himuro Mansion. This stuff is probably all going into Mr. Takamine's next book. He really seems to be into this subject matter. His output rate should be good. September 10th, 4 p.m. The entrance door is broken. When in the world did that happen? It won't open. I'll have to find another way out. Hmm. Note 3. He doesn't feel well. September 11th. I haven't been feeling well since two nights ago. Actually, it's more like ever since Tomo took my picture. What in the world does the rope in this photo mean? I wonder. Now that's interesting. He's He, he had a picture of himself taken, and he says he noticed something about rope. That uh, If I recall correctly, that will come in... Um, we'll see a, a read a little bit more about, about that in the story. Uh, well, as, as, it, as it develops. Chart of numbers for Mansion's devices. Huh. Well, this sounds like it's going to be in, important to puzzles. 
September 10th, 1, 10 p.m. There seem to be a few devices in this mansion that are engraved with old characters. When I asked Mr. Takamine about them, he said they correspond to numbers. I understand the first few. They're the old characters for the numbers 0 through 3, but I don't get the rest. They're characters that have the same readings as 4 through 9, but mean something different. I guess each one has a special meaning. I'll figure out the rest later. Now, this looks like it's going to be important. I'll need to uh, make reference to this at some point in the game, I'm assuming. Alright, so that's going to do it for the research notes. Alright, so let's go ahead and continue through this door. Um, now, let's go ahead and touch on the, that uh, subtitle, Based on a True Story. Um, that, I remember at the time when I first uh, heard that, when I first saw that, I was like, holy crap, really? Um, because, you know, I was, what, when this game came out, I would have been, I would have been in high school, yeah. Um, and I remember thinking, whoa, holy cow, really? Um, but what it actually is based off of, there's a lion mask on the chest of drawers. There's a medicine container near the ornamental lion mask. I got the herbal medicine. Um... From what I, from what I am, uh, a little research I've done. Let's see, lots of antiques here. They might have been worth something at some point. So yeah, the, the text on here should be the same. Oh, well, there are several pieces of paper in the drawer. It looks like part of a black notebook. Black notebook scrap. Okay, well, we'll read that. Actually, read it now. Plot of my next work by Junsei Takamine. A series of murders in a country village. Dead bodies turn up one after another. Murders that resemble cruel Shinto rituals of legend in the area. The acts of a man sworn to revenge. And the strange correlation between these acts and the folklore. It's actually kind of fitting that we see this because ra uh, rather than being based on a true story, they're based on actual folklore or we'll say urban legends about, uh, I believe, a, a location that actually exists, but um, there's no actual evidence that these events actually occurred or anything like this actually happened. So, based on a true story, false. Uh, anyways, back to the reading. The man is gradually more and more influenced by the legends. The work will be the story of this man, proceeding in parallel with the tales of the local lore, records of the past discovered after an earthquake. The story gradually blurs the boundary between the present and the past. July 24th, about Himuro Mansion. Himuro Mansion is known as the home of a large landowner that controlled this region, but they say it was originally the place a shrine was built for performing a sacred Shinto ritual, passed down through the generations. But the people of that time kept the ritual a deep, dark secret. They were even forbidden to speak its name aloud. Today, almost no accounts of the ritual exist, aside from a smattering of folklore legends. I found a news clipping inside the notebook. Of course you did! There are news articles inside the notebook. Alright, let's go ahead and read those. Uh, this is setting up a lot of, we'll say, the, um... We'll say the base, uh, base work for the game. Uh... It'll, it'll kind of, uh, we'll say, even out a little bit as we get through, uh... We get, we get a little bit further into the game. There won't be as much reading. So don't, don't worry, I'm not gonna be spending... Uh, I'm not gonna be just sitting here reading a book for you. This is not an audiobook. Um, the earthquake the other day destroyed all five mirrors. The holy mirrors, which were artifacts kept for centuries in the five shrines. These mirrors represent the five gods' protection over this region. That's going to be important. Most commonly known for the five gods' festival held every ten years, when all five mirrors gather in one shrine. The priests of the shrine hope that this isn't a bad omen. I put the notebook and news article in my file. Alright. Bro's Shadow. I love that they, they wrote Bro. So basically, we, we've, uh, we've just captured a photograph, I guess, of our brother's shadow? I guess a, a memory of, uh, of, of him, which doesn't, um, we'll say, bode very well for uh, his uh, survival rate. It looks like there's something inside the drawer of the chest. Type 14 film. Or I haven't really gone into the details of uh, the film and stuff, so, uh, or even, we'll say, the, 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 system, uh, the systems in this game, so let's maybe take some time and look at that. There's a box of film in front of the broken staircase. Type 14 film. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk about film. Uh, basically, let's see, if we look at items, we have herbal medicine, and we've got type 14 film. It's old beat up film. It doesn't have very strong ex exorcismal power. Uh, now we will be able to get stronger film as we, uh, we go on, and uh, the stronger the film, the more, we'll say, damage it will do to ghosts. And we can go ahead and load that into our camera. Right now we only have one type, so that's what we're going to be, um, that's just but what we're going to be uh, going to be using now. Uh, you'll notice at the top it says score. 
5,354. Now, we can't do it right now, uh, but eventually we will be able to use our score, we'll say, uh, and I believe some of those red stones that we have none of, but you look up at the top, um, there's sort of a redstone. We'll be able to use some of those to uh, go ahead and upgrade our camera. And we get score by snapping photographs of uh, various, uh, we'll say various ghosts. For example here, the child behind, if you look here, it says score of 500. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and protect this, this, uh, this one here. Just because I, I, I want to keep it. I like keeping, um, uh, photos in our, uh, our album of, um, of ghosts. I, I like, like, having sort of a record of all the ghosts we've, uh, taken pictures of. So, man looking down, we got a score of 279. And we'll, you get better scores, uh, the better the picture you take. Uh, an angry man, we got 500 for that. Now, uh, as you can see, you get score for finding, we'll say, the hidden ghosts. And that's important because if you find the hidden ghosts, you can get more score, which will allow you to make your camera stronger. So it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like an experience system. Uh, so, you know, even those benign ghosts, you want to be, uh, so you're quick on the draw and try to snap photos of them. Uh, let's see, what, 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 which side is best? Which uh, one really brings out his, uh, his good side? This one here tends to have a higher score, but this one here, I feel is like a better picture of the bound man. So, you know, we'll, we'll keep this one here. Uh, the score is not dependent upon which photos you keep, it's just dependent upon, you know, what photos you've taken. So, man on a beam, we'll capture that. I like to save at least one photo of each ghost that we've caught. Well, or say caught on film. Um, yeah, we'll get more into that a little bit, uh, a little bit later. So, let's go ahead and continue exploring. Uh, we saw the, uh, our bro's shadow go up these stairs, so why don't we go ahead and, uh, head on up these stairs? Because that's, that's what you do in this game, is you, uh, you chase after ghosts. You follow ghosts so that they can lead you to your death. It always makes me nervous because they, they like to go uh, silent every once in a while. The game just goes quiet. Uh, there's a broken partition screen here. I hear something. That sounds eerie. You hear it? It's like some weird chanting. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that door in a second. I know there was a padlock on it before, but um, if I recall correctly, it's uh, she said it's been, what, two weeks since her brother disappeared? So, uh, you know, things may have changed, and I guess it's evidenced by the fact that there's items all over the place. There's something on the floor. More herbal medicine. And what have we got in here? There isn't anything in the drawer or the chest. Okay. So let's head back over to the, uh, the chanting door. And, uh, see what- uh, see if we can get through there. Alright, let's see. It's locked. I hear something on the other side of the door. Maybe someone's in there. Possibly. Alright. So, we can't go through there. Now, if I recall correctly, you need to try the door for it to trigger something else. Or you need to at least come up the stairs because something's gonna happen when you come down. Yeah, run down the stairs. Okay, darn, I was talking, uh, while he was talk- while he was talking, so I missed that. What I'll do is I'll mute myself out, um, so you guys can at least hear what he said. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's not that important right now. It's- it's-, it's flavor. But we saw him go through this way here. So, what we want to do is... Let's, uh... Let's try to interact with this. That's not creepy in the least, um, but it looks like we have a helpful ghost here. In finder mode, you can see things that can't be seen with a naked eye. A naked eye. Interesting. Interesting wording. Try taking a photo of uh, if the controller vibrates or you hear strange noises. All right, so I, if you you can see, there's a bit of a, a weird distortion effect, and I do indeed feel the controller vibrating. And in the bottom corner, we can see the 
um, the blue light, and we can hear the sound. So there's a lot of cues telling us, hey, maybe we should t snap a photo here. So let's go ahead and uh, back up, snap a nice photo of this uh, thingamabob. And, like magic, we can see there's a door behind it. Holy cow! No folding screen in the photo. A door appears where the uh, screen should be. You know, we could have just moved this aside with our hands and not wasted uh, film, but whatever. We, we, we can use the, the camera to, uh, to see through things. Uh, you know, it, it, this is, that was a learning, we'll say, um, experience, because we are going to come... Like in the photo. Yes, just like in the photo. Uh, because, you know, there are going to be parts in the game where we are going to be uh, needing to see things. Uh, that we can use the camera for. So anyways, there seems to be a hidden door behind the folding screen. Why don't we go ahead and open it? Where does this lead us? What the heck is that? We have a small blue light. If I approach it, what happens? Hmm, interesting. So somebody's looking for the key. So is that just a, a like a, a quick uh, brief memory or something? Like, <laughs> I love that you can interact with the 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 environment in some ways. Like uh, the, these things that are hanging, they're they're not static. And uh, so we have got a door. Is that a door? No, it's not a door. That's a wall. Okay, so we're gonna come around this corner, and uh, she's looking off to her left. So that in, that's yeah. That's because there's a door there. Hmm. Okay, I think I remember. Uh, okay, let's let's go through the door. Let's see. Okay, I think I remember where we're at. Uh, all right, but you know what, though, guys, I am unfortunately out of time. So we're gonna go ahead and end things here. Um, next time we're gonna go ahead and we'll say continue exploring through the Humido Mansion, and, uh, there's still a lot to talk about, I, I, I feel like I haven't covered anything, but, uh, uh yeah, I'm, I'm in the mood for some nice spookiness, and, uh, the game definitely amps up later, there are some genuinely, uh, great scares, uh, in this game, but, uh, anyways, if you like the video, you like the content, and you would like to see more of it, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up, if you didn't like it, well, go ahead and leave it a thumbs down, either way, let me know what you thought in the comment section, and until next time, I would like to ask you all to game on.